Hi everyone, welcome back to Edge Kingdom College. We'll be doing Power Reading Test 37 today. So before we begin, as always, I'd like to go through some key points. Um, this time we only have one. So today I really want to focus on answering the question. So this includes reading the actual verb. So that means doing what the question asks us to do. So for example, if the question asks us to identify or explain, then we will identify and explain. So we will look into the text and find out what um, it's looking for and also try and describe and um, I guess provide some knowledge um, as to like why there is a certain outcome. And I also want to focus on the little details of these questions because the questions we have um, for this test um, could probably try and trip you guys over so you guys might get one answer that would be really good but the thing is it's not what the question is asking you to do so that's what I'd like to focus on today so this is our first text it's a review um, by Neil Smith on the movie A Good Woman in 2005 so let's get started as soon as you guys finish reading this text so the first question asks us how would you describe the review? So the question is asking us, um, what does the review say about the film, basically? So um, does the reviewer think that it's a good film or a really bad film? Um, just some definitions I'd like to go through is actually for D, lukewarm. Lukewarm means um, like uh, in the middle, right? Neutral, right? Lukewarm is usually used uh, to describe water, so when water is like room temperature, um, but in this case it's being used um, as a synonym for neutral. Anyway, looking at the extract I have on the board, we have a lot of praise um, in the extract. So um, the reviewer praises the dialogue by saying that um, it's uh, very well done, um, the actors and actresses um, depict it in a way that it's that is very accurate to the time period um, and very at the very bottom the very last sentence um, he describes the bygone age of deliciously divine decadence so not only is this reviewer thinking that this is a good film they're thinking that it's amazing right because it's amazing right we're going to choose a highly favorable um, I can see how some of you guys may have chosen approving like C but C wouldn't be feasible because that would be like a, if they only just liked it. But based on this part of the extract alone, the reviewer has really enjoyed the film. And this is only in this um, extract that I've put up on the board. Keep that in mind. Question two says, who is Oscar Wilde? So we want to figure out, well, who is Oscar Wilde, right? So who is that person? Okay, so... From the extract, it says Wilde's 1892 play was his first stage success and set the template for his other studies of class and human nature. Um, but while Barker keeps his faith with the author's classy wit, okay, just stopping right there. So Barker um, now is the director. He is, or they are adapting um, the movie from Oscar Wilde's original, right? Because underneath it says with the author's classy wit. So that those are things that. Um, Barker maintains. So in essence, Oscar Wilde is the writer of A Good Woman. Question three, we just have um, an extract. So deliciously divine decadence is an example of what language devices? So um, deliciously divine decadence, since they all start with a D, um, it is all alliteration, right? So let's take a look at our options. Hyperbole is an exaggeration. Um, there is no exaggeration here. Um, an exaggeration would be like, I'm starving, right? When you're just really hungry, right? So there's no exaggeration here. Um, in terms of B, assonance, this, there is an assonance here because remember, assonance is the similar sounds in the middle of um, a word. So delicious, divine, decadent. So we have the D or like D, like D-E or D-I, right? but you would pronounce it as D, okay? Um, metaphor, there is a bit of a metaphor here, okay? Because if we look at the complete line, right? Um, they actually do describe the movie as decadence, right? Note that decadence is um, a word that you would use to describe food, right? When food is quite decadent, it's luxurious, right? Um, so the only feasible answer would be B. 
um, just to reiterate, um, or just to clarify, this cannot be an onomatopoeia because onomatopoeia are words such as smack, bang, they are sound effects, so it cannot be that. And it also cannot be D because, like I said, it is neither hyperbole or onomatopoeia. Okay, now moving on to this extract called Expresso, a classic book while you wait by Claire Sutherland. Just to quickly review, we're just talking about a, um, an espresso machine that can also print books. Um, and they're just uh, telling us about um, how this um, new machine is, well, it's new and it's amazing and how it could help um, you know, sell more books. So let's get started with the questions. So the Expresso Book Machine won an award for being what? So um, this is taken from the very um, the first two sentences of the extract. Um, so customers will be able to print copies. Um, and the second part, it's the first in the world that prints, cuts, and glues on a color cover in 7 to 14 minutes. So um, this, uh, this invention is quite new, right? Um, and when you think about it, it's really convenient. Um, they're putting two machines into one, like one that can make coffee, but at the same time print books, right? So for that reason, we're going to call it innovative, right? Innovative is when something is new, advanced, and um, convenient. So the, we usually use this word to describe, um, wait, hold on. We usually use this word to describe like new inventions actually so the fact that it's doing two tasks simultaneously is well it's a pretty big feat okay moving on to the fifth question the main reason books are out of print is because so this is from the very last sentence right um we want to look for a reason why books are no longer selling or books are no longer being printed um, we, um, so we're going to look for a sentence in the text, um, that tells us that, well, books aren't being sold. And that tells us the reason as to why. So I took this part from around the last part, okay? So, um, it states, it really does present a great opportunity for writers to be assessed on the quality of the material rather than their publishing industry contacts. So, this um though it's not explicitly stated it's heavily implied that authors do not get a fair amount of commissions or money or income from their publishing company right because of that um because of their lack of income we can say that it's c it is unprofitable to publish them right um, writers aren't getting paid extra money or um profit right um to write they're just being paid the same amount i guess and to um stay the same um so they don't you know like i said they don't generate any profit or that much of an income they stay in the same position and they're well they're stuck okay so the next extract we have is an excerpt from the outsiders by se hinton so please read this in your spare time so Technically, in this extract, we're actually not given a proper, like a proper scene, right? Um, we're actually given two flashbacks. So one, um, of the protagonist being in their English class where they read Great Expectations, and there is an encounter with this um classmate called Pip and a girl, and the girl basically just sneers at the guy, um, at Pip because he wasn't behaving. Um, in a very polite manner and the second flashback is when they look at their biology class and um, they uh, couldn't um, they couldn't cut um, the worm so they used their own knife and there was a classmate of theirs nearby and their classmate basically freaked out and then towards the end it becomes clear that this person has been involved in criminal activity because they mentioned that one of their friends or um, two bit um, was well is stealing and they're you know they're friends with them so they participate in the same activities um, at least um, in this case they do um, so let's move on to the question so question six actually focuses on the first flashback that I've mentioned so the girl from the great from great expectations can be described as what so 
we're going to look for a description of the girl um well towards um the um the kid pip so um i took this extract this sen these sentences from um the text itself so um i want to look at the first line and the way that girl kept looking down on him right so in this case um the girl is actually being a little bit disrespectful right she's looking down at this guy because he's not behaving in a polite manner so we actually we also get a sense that she feels better than him like if you guys know the word um pretentious or superior right so because um she's looking at down at someone when you look at down when you look down at someone you think you're better than them at least um in english that's what it means so that is associated with disdainful disdainful means to have a lack of respect um or um to sneer so this is very fitting to describe the girl in question seven from this information it seems that this book may revolve around what so school a girl a gang or biology so um i actually want to use um the process of elimination here right so we want to know what the ultimate goal is for this book like what does it like um what is the message right so we have been getting some flashbacks um around school right but that's not really the focus of it it seems that these characters are quite distracted from their outside lives um rather than school um so it can't be school a girl is a bit vague we're not really sure um a gang is the most likely answer in this case because at the very end they conclude with um the dallas and two-bit characters right so um it kind of summarizes the behaviors that the protagonist does have like their um criminal like activity and attitude as well um and it cannot be d like biology because biology has only been used um, for one of the flashbacks, and biology was also not the focus of that extract. So that is why the answer is C, um, because all the ideas link to the final, um, the final paragraph, which is the protagonist and their, and their friends participating in some sort of criminal activity. So them being in the gang, or being a gang. And for our final extract, we have a song, See You Again by Miley Cyrus. So you guys can listen to this in your spare time as well. So question eight asks us, the language in this song can be best described as what? So we're looking for an adjective um, that can tell us like the tone um, or what it, the song is like. So I just chose this stanza, right? So the last time I freaked out, I just kept on looking down. I st st stuttered when so because we have this imitation of um, stuttering it cannot be formal because if it was formal right then it would just say i stuttered instead of i st st stuttered right um so we also get this feeling that cyrus is like narrating um a story so it's like um she is telling us this story like we're her friend so because of that it's informal right because it feels like a conversation right um i also want you guys to look at the words such as um in the fourth line thinking right um and just uh about as well right so that's very informal because that's how you would say an actual conversation um it can't be vulgar because it's not derogatory or offensive and it's not ridiculous um it's just um well, yeah, it can't. It's not ridiculous because for it to be ridiculous, that there had to be something that's very um bold, right? But there isn't. So, question nine: the singer is expressing an overwhelming sense of what? So I wanted to look at these two stanzas specifically because the first stanza up on the board actually shows that um, Miley Cyrus has this um, this imagination, right? She has this expectation that. Um, she's already known this guy right she has this thing in her head that tells her like i've met him before in like some sort of past life and um we have this deep connection right so she's expecting that as soon as she's going to talk to him properly right 
um, they're gonna inst they're gonna just click instantly, right? Um, so because of that, she's got that um, there's an overwhelming sense of expectation because she is like hoping, right? Um, there's no negative emotions um, in this case, right? Like A, B, and D. Um, and in question ten, Miley seems to think to think that her feelings are what? So I want to look at this extract in particular. I've got a way of thinking when something is right. I feel like I must have known you in another life because I felt this deep connection when you looked in my eyes. So, um, quite literally, like the image is that they are looking at each other, right? And Miley Cyrus is just kind of thinking to herself, like, wow, like I feel like I already know this person, like we have such a deep connection. And because of that, right, she feels as if it's mutual. She feels like it is on both ends. Right, because she feels like she's already known him. Um, she feels like um, the other guy has known her in their previous life. So because they both feel the same, at least in her head, she thinks that it's mutual. So the answer would be A. So that's it for today. I hope you guys um, have paid attention to the details of um, the questions, as in the verbs and the specific um, uh, things that the question is asking you to do so um please keep this in mind for your future te for your future questions please know that these are skills that you guys should be putting into your future questions um and that we're just applying them to these examples anyway um i'll see you guys next week um please stay safe and yeah bye